Hey everyone, it's Kyle. Azor Height. Daenerys Stormborn Targaryen is a major central character in the A Game of Thrones and the A Song of Ice and Fire book series. In this video, we will take a look at her beginnings as an exile on the run, her growth, and possibly the next step in her character development. For content purposes, we will try to stick mainly with Daenerys' journey in the TV series. So let's get hype and let's jump into the video. It must be remembered that Daenerys never had a constant home base or many people to call family. Daenerys' life has always been on the run, and her mother, Queen Rhaella, was pregnant with her when she escaped to Dragonstone from King's Landing. The night Daenerys was born, she and her older brother Viserys Targaryen spirited away to the free cities of Braavos by Sir Willem Derry. For the first five years of her life, Danny lived safely in a house with a red door. She remembers a lemon tree just outside the window in her room, and it stands to reason that when Danny thinks of home, she remembers the house with the red door, because it was the first place she felt loved and she felt safe. Unfortunately, that security doesn't last very long, and Sir Derry dies, and the servants force Danny and Viserys out of this house. After that, they are constantly on the run from Robert Baratheon's assassins, and Viserys uses their impressive Valyrian Targaryen legacy to try and gain support for an invasion of Westeros, but it is not successful. At one point, Viserys has to sell their mother's crown so they can have enough money to survive. Viserys becomes known as the Beggar King. He lashes out violently at Danny due to his frustrations and possibly a touch of madness. Sadly, Danny becoming a victim of verbal and physical abuse from the one person she depended on for survival. When we first meet Daenerys in the series, she is about to be married to a complete stranger, the intimidatingly powerful Khal Drogo. This marriage is a deal devised by Illyrio Mopatis and Viserys in order to use Drogo's Khalasar to invade Westeros and take the Iron Throne by conquest. Viserys blatantly tells her, I would let his whole tribe fuck you, all 40,000 and their horses too, if that's what it took. Now, Danny is aware that she is merely a bargaining chip for her brother. Her feelings and opinion have little value, and her existence is basically of that of a slave. But a dragon is not a slave. Once Danny marries Khal Drogo, she is no longer under her brother's protection. She is no longer his to torment. She's protected by Ser Jorah and the Dothraki, and she learns their culture as well. As their Khaleesi, she experiences freedom and power for the very first time in her life, and she decides to use these to save and liberate those in need. In a sense, Khal Drogo and the Dothraki wake the dragon inside of Daenerys. Danny experiences tragedies as well, the death of her husband and her son, and betrayals Miri Mazdur and Zero Zoan Doxos, and brings about a miraculous event, the birth of the dragons, creatures that the world had not seen in over 100 years. According to Dothraki tradition, Danny is supposed to return to Vaes Dothrak and join the Dashkalin. However, her Targaryen spirit will not let her do this. She is determined to fulfill her dream of sitting on the Iron Throne, but she needs to gather her strength and gather an indomitable following to do this task. It is not long before she decides to apply her ideas on a larger scale, freeing the Unsullied, the slaves of Yunkai, and those in Marine, where she takes up residence as his queen. Danny's time in Essos represents her growth from subordinate to superior. She learns the hard way to have faith in herself and her extraordinary children. It is also important to note that she displays both a commanding presence and a nurturing one as well. The love she would have lavished on her son Rego is now given to the newly freed slaves. And in Essos, Danny figures out how to dismantle and rebuild the world around her, making it better than when she found it. In her mind, she intends to do the same in Westeros by breaking the wheel. However, in Season 8, Danny's journey has been off to a rocky start. She has not been well received by the North, and she is quickly finding out that the aristocracy of Westeros is not the same as Essos. There are stark differences, if you will, between being the rightful queen and earning the respect of others. Davos told Tyrion this, that the North is more harsh than most, and that you have to earn their respect. Their sovereignty has never been respected by the Dragon Riders ever since the time of Torrhen Stark, who bent the knee to egg on the Conqueror, it seems. The North remembers after all. Yes, Daenerys has dragons and is going to help them fight the army of the dead, but Sansa makes a great point in their conversation that they only just got Winterfell back from the Boltons. So seeing someone else come in and essentially say, bend the knee after Jon was elected king of the North is a pretty big deal. The reason Jon was elected king in the north was not only because people believed he had the blood of Ned Stark in his veins, but because he made huge sacrifices to fight for his home. Even though he knew they didn't have enough men, he was in the thick of things during the Battle of the Bastards, fighting shoulder to shoulder with his fellow northmen and the wobblings as well. Jon didn't hesitate to risk it all for the sake of his home in Winterfell. Daenerys Targaryen has never really had a home, but I guess we could say that her dream of a house with a red door in the books is the closest thing that she's ever really had. 
Symbolically throughout history, the red door has been seen as a way of communicating to tired travelers that a place was welcoming and should you stay, you would get a good night's rest, be safe, and be protected. But Daenerys has never been safe, has had many sleepless nights, and has almost never been welcome anywhere in the world. This house with the red door is a clear reflection of her inward reality, that her life has been filled with fire and blood. In episode 2, Danny's past is brought back front and center with the arrival of the man who killed her father, the Kingslayer Jaime Lannister. But things don't go as planned now as Sir Brienne of Tar speaks up for Jaime, convincing her that Jaime should stay the swaying John to avoid further conflict and tension within the North. But that doesn't stop Jorah from giving advice to Daenerys to go speak with Sansa. Daenerys does this, and even though she has a negative reaction to Sansa's last question about the sovereignty of the North after she wins the Iron Throne, she still took his advice to go speak with Sansa in the first place. Now, this is purely speculation, but I believe that Sir Jorah will die defending Winterfell in Episode 3. And if that's the case, then their last conversation was not only about going to speak with Sansa, but trusting Tyrion Lannister as well. Does this mean if Jorah dies in the next episode, that Daenerys would think about the weight of his final words more carefully? Yes, I believe she will. We can't forget the interaction between Jon and Jorah as well beyond the wall last season where Jon tried to give him back Longclaw and where Jorah told him that he should keep it in his family and give it to his children if he ever has any when they come of age. This connects us beautifully to the theme that was explored so heavily in A Night of the Seven Kingdoms episode 2. Not only the themes of redemption and love, but also family. Daenerys believed that she was the last Targaryen in the world, and as Maester Aemon told Jon Snow in episode 5 of season 5, a Targaryen alone in the world, it's a terrible thing. Jon asked Maester Aemon for advice on what to do because he has to make a tough decision that will divide the men of the Night's Watch, and Maester Aemon tells him just to do it even though Jon hasn't told him what he wants to do. This is one of the most important scenes of the series because not only does it highlight what Maester Aemon says about the joy of Jon's command, but also finding the strength of doing what needs to be done. Kill the boy and let the man be born. Kill the boy, Jon Snow. These are the same words that Aemon said to an earlier Aegon, his younger brother who would go on to become King Aegon Targaryen, the fifth of his name. I can't help but feel like what Maester Aemon says to Jon also applies to Daenerys and her current situation. She needs to do what needs to be done by showing her willingness to sacrifice, going against all odds, and putting herself in danger to protect the North. Kill the girl, Daenerys. Kill the childish declaration of I am queen, and show it by doing what the common person cannot. Daenerys has to put it all on the line because simply saying I am queen is not enough. She has to realize that in order to gain true power, you have to let things go. I believe that not only Daenerys will do this in Episode 3 at the Battle of Winterfell, but she will also take the Night King head-on with Drogon attacking the Night King while he is mounted on Viserion. We will see a Dance of Dragons 2.0 over Winterfell. And since the Night King brings the storm, wouldn't it be poetic for Daenerys to be reborn in this moment fighting for the side of the living? Because the Night King enslaves the dead and Daenerys is not only the Mother of Dragons, but also the Breaker of Chains. One thing we haven't seen the resolution to is the conversation between Jon and Daenerys after Jon dropped the bomb that she isn't the only Targaryen left in the world, and that he is the son of her brother Rhaegar Targaryen, making Jon the last male Targaryen heir, which is a solid claim to the Iron Throne. While this scene is happening, we hear Podrick Payne sing Jenny's song, which many believe is thought to have been sung and possibly written by Rhaegar Targaryen to Lyanna Stark at the tourney of Harrenhal where they fell in love. In my video yesterday, I spoke about how this related to Jon in many ways since his journey is a song of ice and fire, but I have a theory that this is also referring to Daenerys Targaryen. A couple of lines from the song specifically jump out at me, the ones who have been gone for so long, which I believe is in relation to her ancestors, and also those who came before her, the people who have sat on the Iron Throne. They are Daenerys' ghosts too, and it's also her family as well. This idea of achieving victory by winning the Iron Throne by conquest and sitting the Iron Throne is actually Viserys' dream. Daenerys dreams of the house with the red door, which is symbolically linked to wanting to belong somewhere, to be safe, and since she now feels like the walls are closing in around her and everything that she's known in her whole life, her one goal has just flashed before her eyes. However, the ironic thing is that Jon has never really craved leadership. He didn't ask to be crowned king in the north, and it's a sound assumption that he doesn't even want the Iron Throne. Jon wants to achieve peace and balance within Westeros, and we can't forget that Jon was raised as a bastard, and is only now just beginning to grasp this newfound information that's been placed in his lap. Like Danny, Jon also wants a place to belong. 
So perhaps all the criticism that has been thrown at Daenerys Targaryen this week after episode 2 saying that she's unfit to rule and that she will turn into her father is maybe just a little bit misplaced. We've witnessed a scared girl overcome every obstacle and every tragedy laid in front of her. She has brought slave masters low and raised slaves up to free men and women who now have the power to determine their own destinies. And the writers have used the first two episodes to make us believe that Daenerys will spiral from exalted dragon queen and savior of the slaves to the Mad Queen 2.0. But we gotta remember that we already have that character with Cersei Lannister. What we need to remember is that Danny's strength is not just from her dragons, it is from her ability to adapt and survive. When she married Khal Drogo, she adapted to the Dothraki culture and proved them that she was a worthy Khaleesi. After that, she was able to make change and she shifted and adjusted to nearly every city she visited in Essos. Now that she is in Westeros, particularly the north, she will need to do the same. Simply declaring herself queen and flying her dragons around will not bring these harder northerners to her side, but showing that she is willing to fight and die for them might change their minds. The North has lost fighting men several times over, with Rickard and Brandon Stark in King's Landing, Rob Stark in The Twins, and Jon Snow in The Battle of the Bastards. Now they are about to face the most dangerous threat yet, the Night King and his army of the dead. It is time they see an outsider who is just as willing to experience as much loss as they have for the sake of defending the North, Daenerys Stormborn Targaryen. But what do you think? Will Daenerys realize what's important and kill the girl? Will she be reborn during the coming storm in the battle for Winterfell? Let me know your thoughts, your theories, and tinfoil in the comment section. I will be dropping a Brienne of Tarth Jamie Lannister comparative analysis video this Saturday. So if you love Game of Thrones as much as I do and you want to see more Game of Thrones videos like the one you watched today, then make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get updated for my daily upcoming Game of Thrones videos on the channel. Also, a big thank you to Amy Collins-Russell for co-scripting this video. We had so many awesome discussions about Daenerys, so we decided to go to bat for the Mother of Dragons today. Also, a big thank you to all of the new members of the Super Pack on Patreon. Thank you, Julie. We got Michael Englund. We have Megan, Glossary, Linda, LMC, Terry Smith, and Zach. Thank you very much for your support. And if you want to support the channel and help the Hype and Love community grow, you can find the link to my Patreon and go find me in the description of this video with all of my social media. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hype and love.